Hi everyone and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben and this is part 17. So let's get started. In this session, we're going to learn how to map seismic data using Google Earth or QGIS and freely available information. To start this session off, like most good bits of research, we start with Google. And we can simply type in something called USGS seismic data. What we're hoping to find after typing in USGS seismic data is the Search Earthquake Catalog. This is the Earthquake Catalog from USGS and it enables us to start to think about what sort of data we want to get our hands on and it allows us to categorize the data before we download it. On this search catalog, we've got some basic options such as the type of magnitude we might be looking for, whether it's 2.5 plus or over 4.5 and we can even go custom as well. We can select our time frame. So for this one, I'm going to go through the past 30 days. And we also have world, and we can also select the geographic region. For this one, I'm actually going to go custom. And because of recent events, I'm going to have a look over Turkey and Syria and collect data from this region. I can easily draw a box, which allows me to select the area that I want to pull the magnitude data from or the seismic data. If we go through advanced outputs, we can see those coordinates that we set up in that box. We can also have a look at depth, but we can also go through event type as well. A lot of this data isn't worldwide. So some of the more finite data such as uh, mining explosions or quarry explosions, mine collapse and things like that are very much US based. But we're going to go for uh, the earthquakes and earthquake data. So I'll leave that on event type. And we can also have a go through some of those other things. For the output options, the first one I want to show you is the map and list function. So we've selected our data and I want to have a look at the map and list option. So all we have to do for that is click search. So as we can see, the data for earthquakes has loaded here and we can see this laid out on a map. It also has the plate boundaries that we can see here and we can even click on things such as population density uh, and other options and we can even go to a satellite view. So this map, if you didn't want to put it into Google Earth or you didn't want to drag it into QGIS, is so useful like this. And we can also even have a look at uh, world data as well, um, which is a really easy way to just view where the strong points are or where there's been a lot of seismic activity uh, over the past. And again, we can also fuse that population density data in there and follow along with those plate boundaries. So that's just one of the options that we've got to use. What I really want to get my hands on is a KML. We can also go a CSV or a GeoJSON, but I'm going to go a KML because I'm going to load this in Google Earth. For the KML specific options, we can have a look at color by age or color by depth, and we can order it by time, so newest or oldest or even magnitude largest. I might go the magnitude largest first. All I have to do is click search and that will generate my KML that I can then load up in Google Earth. That's downloaded there. So what I'm going to do is open up my Google Earth and I'm going to load that into here now. I can simply load that KML by dragging it into a Google Earth folder. Usually it's going to fly right back over to the US, uh, but I want to keep that on my area marked here which is where I pulled the data from. And what we can see is seismic data in different magnitudes. The size is based upon the count of the magnitude. So the bigger circles representing a higher count. And you can see these are from some of the recent devastating and terrible earthquakes that have happened around Turkey of impacting Turkey and Syria. 
And you can really go through some of these and have a look at that information up close. And this is really helpful to map because we can also see what areas may have been affected by those counts and also where those humanitarian efforts might be. We can see the legend that pops up on the left there, which allows us to identify for size, magnitude, but also the color as well, indicating whether it may have been the past day. So we have some activity that's quite recent, past week, which is yellow, and older because this is a 30 day collection in white. That's really useful, that legend that pops up there so that we can zoom around or fly around this area of Turkey and we can identify which ones might be recent, but also their scale of size and magnitude. So we can see that this one's quite close. Between the seven and eight, it was a 7.5 that happened in that area. And that also gives a really good indication as to the area affected as well. To build on from this, it's really useful to think about how this sort of data works with other data sets. So if we have a look at QGIS, which we can also load the same data set into, here's an example map I've made of the exact same data that I've loaded into Google Earth, which is that KML of seismic data that I've pulled from the USGS search earthquake catalog. And I've also layered that with Facebook population data as well, which is freely available and linked to in the description below. And that allows me to see not only the names of the areas, but also that recent population data, just to see where some of the areas may be indicative of a high population and where there may have been numerous lives impacted upon, as well as some of those less crowded areas. And that's really useful for us to see the density of some of those areas and where large amount of magnitude pings have struck nearby highly built up areas. So for example, we can see this area here and we can see some of these areas up here and around here as well. And this is just a good way to use freely available data, fusing two different data sets together to create a new visualization and explore the power of visual storytelling using different publicly available data sets. I hope you enjoyed this really short tutorial. I'll be seeing you in the next session, but to make sure you get the notifications, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.